one year demonetization anniversary. On this very same day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced an unprecedented move. 86% of the currency in circulation would no longer be valid, is what he said that evening. And this sent shock waves across the economy as well as the banking system. While some pockets of the financial sector did reap benefits, people like you and me, we struggled to be able to bring the cash to work. One year on, we at Bloomberg Queen take a look at what changed after that historic move. And for that, I'm going to hand it over to Ira. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, you know, we're going to hear a lot. We're going to see a lot. We're going to read a lot of opinions on what demonetization did or did not do. Uh, in our defense, this was, as some have called, the largest natural experiment. So it's important to keep track of how data has moved uh, since then. And that's what we're getting you here, the data. Uh, so the GDP number is perhaps what has been talked about the most. Uh, we will get another number at the end of the month. 5.72% is where we've settled. And in the quarter before that, uh, we were at about 7.5%. Uh, so nearly a 200 basis points decline in GDP. GDP growth. Uh, but of course, uh, you can't blame all of that entirely on demonetization. There's been GST mixed into it. Uh, and also, uh, some have argued that growth had been slowing all the way uh, from the March 2016 quarter. Uh, that's one beta point to keep uh, track of. And uh, you'll get some incremental information at the end of the month. Uh, the other data point, of course, uh, is uh, the currency numbers. Uh, we all saw the impact of currency plunging uh, at its lowest in the January months. And then, of course, remonetization picked up pace. Uh, at current levels in October, uh, your currency in circulation is still lower than where it was uh, when you started out in November. Uh, but of course, uh, there are a couple of points to make over here. One is the fact that in that period leading up to November, cash usage was exceptionally high. Also, we were in a slightly higher inflation environment where cash usage tend to be high. Uh, so to understand whether you've gone back to trend growth or not, you'll probably need another 12 odd months of trend uh, to actually see whether cash usage and the growth in cash usage has slowed down at all uh, as a result of demonetization. That's the currency number. Uh, the other numbers to focus on uh, include uh, bank deposit growth. And there, of course, we've seen the impact. Uh, we had a flood of deposits come into banks. That line, uh, red line tells you uh, how sharply you moved up. Uh, but that was a one-time stock effect. Money that was lying in cash came into bank deposits. Uh, we saw banks saw, see their CASA ratios move up. We saw savings rate come down. All of that was a direct impact. Uh, but again, uh, the question is from here on, will bank deposit growth trend higher? Probably not. It depends on a whole host of other factors, uh, but uh, that was on the uh, bank deposit side. Electronic transactions, much debate here uh, with various economists using various models to try and see uh, whether electronic transactions have actually moved up or not. Uh, and remember, this is a period in which a lot of electronic options were being made available. Uh, so whether this was a demonetization linked move or whether this was a natural transition uh, towards electronic payments, nobody knows. March saw a steep jump, but that was also because of the fact that it was uh, month, it was uh, year end. Uh, so you had transactions in RTGS, NEFT, etc. spike. Uh, so ignore that one spike. Uh, but at current levels, if you look at where we are in September, where we were in November, uh, there is certainly uh, you know a jump up in terms of the electronic transactions. Uh, just a couple of more data points, uh, and uh, this one of course focuses on uh, the uh, financial flows. Lots of talk about the financialization. Uh, here you have mutual fund flows and insurance flows is what we have taken. Uh, this is all RBI data, by the way, not something that we've put together. Uh, so in the November to June 2016 period, uh, you had 9,160 crores flowing into mutual funds. Uh, in the November 2016 to June 2017 period, that number has jumped dr dramatically to about 1.7 lakh crore. Again, keep in mind this was a period when equity markets were also higher. Uh, but yes, some of the stock of money that came into banks found its way into mutual funds. There is no denying that. Uh, but again, has that changed trend in a scenario uh, where perhaps equity markets are flat? We don't know that yet. We'll know over a period of time. Finally, in short, Insurance, insurance was a bit of an anomaly. In the November to Jan period, you'd seen insurance flows go up by about 46%. Uh, but there was just one month, actually, November, uh, where suddenly people went in and used their cash to pay insurance premium. So if you look at a longer period between November and June 2017, that growth has now normalized to about 17.4%. So those are the numbers. Uh, you can perhaps you know, uh, twist and turn those numbers and fit them in, uh, depending on your analysis of demonetization. I know it's tough to call, but net net did this do more harm than good? Have we been able to arrive at that conclusion given all the economic commentary this event has seen in India and across the world? So I'm going to rely on Raghav Bell's words, who will uh, be a part of a documentary we will put out later today, who said uh, that there are one and perhaps one and a half positives from this uh, experiment. 